What's the scariest paranormal thing you experienced? And when you told someone, they didn't believe you. I just want to know what crazy paranormal sh people have experienced. Oh man, I love telling this story to people because they never believe me. And the group of people I was with at the time all remember it the same exact way. I was 16 going on 17, summer of my junior year of high school. Friday or Saturday night, you know, the usual living it up being the bad kids having the time of our lives. Got some weed, needed somewhere to smoke it. Went to the state forest nearby, multiple round gravel lots around the perimeter of this forest for hunters and hikers to park in and enter the woods. The parking lots are maybe five or six cars big, not huge, and there's no driveway or anything, just gravel semicircles off the main road. On the south side of this forest, there's an abandoned church. Looks like a church, but rumor has it they were actually satanic members, thus made quite a name for itself among the paranormal communities and the locals alike. Apparently, shadows chase you off the property, and you can see lights when you drive by or something. I don't know. I never had any desire to go myself. Anyways, that's the background info on the location and setting. So we pull into this gravel lot. Parks closed from dusk till dawn. Technically, we're trespassing, but we just needed somewhere to smoke. Five of us in the truck. Two guys up front, a guy and two girls in the back. We crack the windows, light up. We're listening to music and hanging out. After we smoke. We're all feeling good, but not too high by any stretch. We were all regular users, and we were all feeling fine. The kid in the back seat with us made a joke that it was too hot and crammed in the truck, and if we don't start it up to get some AC going, he's going to climb into the bed of the truck. We all laugh. Nobody wants the AC on. Go right ahead. So he climbs into the bed of the truck through the back window. We continue on with the chit-chat. All of a sudden, he pops his head up and says, Start the truck and get out of here, now. The tone of his voice was bone chilling, to be honest. But we're all like, nah, dude, you're high. Chill out, we're in a parking lot. There's nobody here and we would have seen him pull up. He starts climbing back into the truck and is visibly shaking and says someone is out here with us and we need to go. So we all finally agree. All right, fine. John Doe is scared shitless. We're out of weed anyway. Let's all head over to John's house. We all heard some gravel, like someone was walking towards the truck, and it lit a fire under our butts, so to speak. We start the truck, turn the headlights on, and the parking lot is surrounded. We're in the middle of nowhere, parked in a state forest after dark, and the gravel parking lot is surrounded. I don't even know how many figures there were. It seemed like every gap in the trees was filled with a shadow. But they clearly weren't people. Almost like men in black. They seemed to be wearing black suits or cloaks. They were all white men, with bald heads but indiscernible features of their face or body. To be honest, I don't know if they were men. I don't know if they were human. But they had pale skin and no hair. We peeled out of that parking lot and talked about it the whole way home. We ended up calling it a night and all went our separate ways after that. Everybody says, oh, that forest is haunted like it's no big deal. But that night is scarred into my brain. I want to know where this is. That's terrifying. Appalachia by chance? No, actually, it totally sounds like something that would happen in Appalachia, though. Freaky stuff goes on in those mountains, man. Central Delaware. I grew up in Clop Hill, UK, kinda England's version of Salem. They hung a lot of witches there back in the day, and there's a hanging tree with rope marks that nothing grows around to this day. The village is small and flanked by three forests. We used to walk my friend's dog every day in one of those three woods. We all knew the trails like the back of our hands. One morning, we took the dog out and decided to do a quick loop through one of the woods. It usually took about an hour, a sort of horseshoe shape, totally clear, well-trodden path. We'd walked it hundreds of times. But that day, as we walked into the wood, something felt weird. Just off. We got on the path and the dog, Jojo, was behaving oddly. She kept looking into the trees and growling, looking behind us and whimpering. Instead of running off like she usually did, 
She stuck close and behaved like she was afraid of something, but we couldn't see anything. We don't have wild cats or anything here. I remember at one point we were reaching a clearing that usually looked out over farmer's fields. But it was weird, because there were old barns on it suddenly. My friend and I couldn't remember ever seeing those before, but thought maybe we just never noticed or something. They were pretty far away. Maybe we never really looked. But you'd think we would have seen them in all our walks. We continued, and eventually got to the end of the trail and left the woods and walked home. When we got there, my friend's mother was near frantic. She yelled at us for scaring her. She was about to call police. One hour long walk, which felt like an hour, had taken us six. To this day, I have no explanation for what happened or how. Is there a rational explanation? Maybe. Did my friend and I really just lose track of time on a steady hour long walk? We didn't stop except to look at those barns. Next time we did the walk, there were no barns either. The hanging tree is in the center of that wood. Friends of mine had a very similar experience to this. They were driving through Canterbury amongst houses in the daytime, a route they had driven a lot of times, hospital reasons. Suddenly, they were on a dirt road and it was pitch black. This road spat them out onto Thanet Way. The 30-minute drive took them six odd hours. They are still baffled to this day as to what happened, how day turned to night so quickly, and what dirt road they were on, and how they got there. So many things have happened, but I think the most scary was when I was 15. I was raised in a crazy Pentecostal household, believed in speaking in tongues and slain in the spirit and stuff, and my parents were ministers and had invited a traveling Christian guy, speaker at the church maybe? to come over and bless the land in our house and make sure there were no demons or anything. I know how this sounds. As an ex-believer in organized religion, I'm almost too embarrassed to write all this out. My brother and I in our small friend group just didn't like the guy. He had an off vibe, but the adults wouldn't listen to us. It's as if he was putting on a show for all the churchgoers. Very dramatic, like a TV evangelist. He pointed to a front of clouds. We lived out in the country and you could see them for miles and said, there, do you see them? I call them my boys. And to be honest, I kind of thought I saw something, a lot of somethings. I tried to confirm with him that he meant angels and he just kept avoiding the question. He went and prayed all over the house and all over the property for the whole evening with a group of adults that were in awe of him. The whole evening things felt off, and I kept feeling like I saw entities out of the corners of my eyes. Then, towards the end of the night, I rounded the corner of some trees. I looked up, and there were all kinds of weirdly shaped shadow figures on the barn roof, and a big one in the center with glowy eyes. My brother and I swear the property never felt right since. Pretty sure there's a large creepy something in the basement of that house that was woken up. Lots of weird things started happening then. I was so glad to sell the house after my mom passed away a few years ago. Good riddance. Sorry if this reads poorly. This is one story I've never actually told before. It was the summer of 2002 when the following took place. Since I was born, I was always subject to odd things happening in our household. But it wasn't until our family moved into a well-known apartment complex in Seymour where my life would be turned upside down. I would end up seeing something that would scar me and haunt my thoughts to this very day. Whatever it was in that apartment, it was evil and obsessed with torturing me out of everyone in my family. Its presence grew stronger and stronger as time passed. I would explain to my parents and sister what I would see or hear, and it just seemed like nobody would ever believe me until odd things started happening to them. One time I woke up around 4 a.m. and the moon was so bright, you could see the bluish hue light up the room that me and my sister shared at the time. I woke up to the sound of my parents' doorknob shaking violently down the hallway. My first instinct was to ask, everything okay, dad? There was no reply back and the doorknob stopped shaking to my parents' bedroom. I instantly knew there was someone in our home. 
I leaned over and looked in the hallway from my bed and saw this six to seven foot shadow standing in the middle of the hallway. No one in my family is over 5'7". Panic and fear set in thinking we were getting robbed, and all I could think of is, this is how I die. I slowly move back into my bed under the covers and whisper my sister's name trying to wake her up. My sister asked across the room loudly, what's up, I'm sleeping. I whispered back, shh, there's someone in the hallway. Silence. My sister had fallen back to sleep. I peeked back towards the hallway to see this thing hiding along the side wall, as if trying not to be seen. I can see its chest moving up and down as if it were breathing heavily. Another thing I noticed was how oddly long its fingers were. I have never felt such fear in my body than in that moment, as I feared for the life of my family at this point. I had no idea what I was looking at. I woke my sister back up because, of course, when you get scared, the instant feeling of having to use the bathroom kicks in. My sister, groggy and half asleep, follows me to wait outside the bathroom since I was paralyzed in fear. As I was washing my hands, I could hear my sister walking back to the room. I quickly dried my hands, shut off the lights, and started speed walking down the hallway back to the room. I instantly hear running footsteps growing louder and faster behind me. I ran, shut the door, locked it, and jumped into bed. My sister asked me if I was all right, because she could see how nervous I was. We shrugged all this off as possibly being half asleep and started to close our eyes. That's when we both woke up to the sound of the door violently shaking, as if whatever was behind it wanted to get in and would stop at nothing. The door suddenly stopped shaking. Silence filled the room. I asked my sister, do you hear that? She replied back in a nervous tone, yeah. I made a dash for it and pounded the wall with my fists as hard as I possibly could, yelling for help. I could hear my dad get out of bed frantically and run to our bedroom door, knocking and asking if everything was all right. We explained to my dad what had happened, and he checked everywhere and found no one in the apartment. Every window and door was locked from the inside. Till this day, the image of what I saw still haunts me. That place was evil. It changed our family for the worst, and the feeling of dread and depression filled the walls of that apartment like never before. I really don't know what I saw that day, but I'm glad that never happened to me or my family again. For the most part, my paranormal experiences have been quite benevolent, with one terrifying exception. In 2004, my family and I were on vacation in Scotland. That trip was a horror story in a different kind of way, but now's not the time to discuss that. I was 14 at the time and already fascinated by the paranormal, so we ended up doing pretty much every ghost tour in Edinburgh while we were there. For the most part, they were thoroughly uneventful, until this particular night. For some important context, I'm vision impaired and quickly worked out the easiest way to navigate through tours like this was to be the last person to leave any given room. I could also see much better at 14 than I can now at almost 34. Anyway, this particular tour was the Edinburgh vaults. Fascinating history if you want to look it up. And we get to the end of the tour, everyone else is filtering out of the room, and finally, it comes time for me to make my way out. I get three or four steps away from the doorway out of the room when I feel something forcefully grab my arm. It quite literally took all of my strength to break free and cross the threshold out of that room, at which point I look back to see absolutely nothing there. Mom didn't believe me at first and thought I was just trying to scare her until the next morning where a very distinctive bruise in the shape of an enormous hand covered most of my arm. Unfortunately, we've since lost the photo that was taken as proof. It's a shame that photo no longer exists, but it's definitely not the first story I've heard of someone feeling like they were grabbed in the catacombs. It's such a frequent occurrence, I tend to believe it. Which one of these stories gave you a shiver? For me, it was the first story where they turned on the car lights only to find themselves surrounded by black-clad figures. Talk about nightmare fuel. I wouldn't get over that for a while. 
not to mention the evil apartment with a seven-foot-tall shadow figure rattling the doorknobs and chasing you down the hall. At least during those occurrences, they had a witness. How about you? Ever encounter something so strange that no one else believed you? Let me know in the comments. While I'm at heart a skeptic, I know for a fact that truth is often much stranger than fiction. Until we meet again.